We're on. Excellent. Hi, everybody. Um, I am here today with my colleague, Ricardo Elizalde. Hello, hello. To um, go over with you some Zoom security basics with students. So please make sure that you sign in using the attendance tracker. And if you'd like to follow along with this webinar, please go to the following bit.ly to um, at SFUSD Zoom Secure to get the slide deck so that you can use it um, after this session, as well as share it with others. So we've created a table of contents for you, and this you can also think of as your guide to go to specific things. So if you wanted to, after this session, wanted to check your safety protocols and make sure that you um, are looking at your Zoom settings and making sure you're in alignment with our protocols that we've been um, adjusting lately, then you, know, you can just come and click right to section four and go directly to that section of the slide. So you don't have to go through the entire slide deck instead. So I have a quick little Zoom overview for you here. And this is really just, you guys have been in Zoom for a couple of weeks now and you have the ability to use this whenever you want. So if you need a reference, this is here for you to kind of go over the switching between gallery view and speaker view, making sure you have your participants box and what that can do and your chat and the buttons down below. So I'm going to pass it on to my colleague Ricardo to go over sharing Zoom links securely. Before you pass it on to me, Devorah, can you go back to that initial table of contents and then go ahead and press sharing Zoom links securely? And so here you have the sharing Zoom links securely portion. I'll go to the next slide, Devorah. And we have a table of contents for you here to show across the four different platforms that we highly recommend that you share your Zoom links. The first one is Google Classroom. The next one is Seesaw. The next one is Clever. And the space after that is your Synergy website. So Zoom invitation, Google Classroom. So you've copied your your Zoom invitation, and now you're looking for a place to, to, to paste it. And so we recommend for you to paste that Zoom invitation along the stream of your Google Classroom. Follow those, those directions and it'll get you there. Zoom invitation in Seesaw. We would like you to send a student announcement in Seesaw and go ahead and add Zoom meeting link information to that announcement space right there. And then in the bottom right, you're going to select send now. And then it sends it to all your students. Zoom invitation via Clever. Via Clever, you're going to log into SFU clever.sfusd.edu and you're going to sign in with your credentials. Once you get there, you're going to go to your page. This is D Merling's page, my lovely colleague, and you're going to go to the bottom right and you're going to press um, the green button, which says plus add, and you're going to go ahead and fill out the rest of the information so folks can see, folks can see how to add the link to the Zoom to the Zoom invitation. And folks, just so you know, um, right here where there's an icon that says upload, if you wanna get all fancy, what you can do is you can download the Zoom icon um, into your desktop and then upload a Zoom link so that the students know it is um, Zoom and then add your meeting link there. Fair enough, thank you. Deborah. And then finally, onto the Synergy platform. And so you want to, what you want to do is as a teacher, you're going to log into Synergy and um, the fifth uh, space is your class website. The, the fifth, um, uh, the fifth um, select, select after class schedule and before course history, 
you go to class websites and then you select announcements and then you paste your information in there. And what happens then is that parents can see it if they've signed into parent view and students can see it if they've signed into student view. And um, just so you guys know that this is a recommendation from the district that you have your Zoom links and your schedule in your individual Synergy class website so that all students and parents can understand where they're supposed to be, when they're supposed to be there, and how to get connected to the meeting. And really, 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 um, as a parent in the school district, I, I really hope that most of your parents are getting signed up to Parent View um, because it really is some good information on there to help parents um, navigate all these spaces. Absolutely. Thanks, Ricardo. Okay, so now that we were talking about that, we're going to talk about some of the new SFUSD safety protocols that we have um, set up lately to ensure that students and teachers are as safe as possible during their live synchronous meetings. Okay, now this is a lot of content in here, um, but basically there's some key pieces, right? Make sure, make sure, make sure you have waiting rooms set up. Make sure your waiting rooms are enabled. Make sure your students are in the waiting room. Okay. Turn off screen sharing. There's going to be times when you need screen sharing to be up. Maybe the students are presenting some content, but for the most part, keep it off and keep that as a default. And then if there's times where that needed, after the meeting has set up and begun and you have all your students that are supposed to be in your meeting in and you have a specific student that's going to share, then you turn on the share screen through your security button on your Zoom toolbar. Okay, do not allow authenticated users. Only SFUSD students and employees should be accessing Zoom meetings. Okay, so keep that button clicked off and manage your chat. Okay, again, using that security button, if there's a time where you're delivering content or discussion is happening and you don't have a need for chat to be open, turn it, select off and keep it off during certain times of the meeting. Okay, things that we want you also to make sure is that you do not, and we repeat, do not post Zoom links and invites publicly, okay? We've just went over the four places that you can put your links um, for SFUSD, which is in your Google Classroom, in Seesaw, in Clever, and on your Synergy Class website. Those are the four places, nowhere else, okay? Do not allow your meetings to be open to external places and make sure that you are monitoring your breakout rooms. Okay, so where do we post Zoom meeting classroom info? We've just gone over it, right? Okay, make sure that you have it in your class Synergy site. You can send an email or a message through Synergy, um, Google or Classroom, and make sure that only the SFUSD students are invited, okay? And um, that is really it. We've also come up with this wonderful recommended safety tips, which is just like a one pager that provides you all the information we're talking about. And it's right here in the link. So when you need that, please just um, go and click on that. Actually, I think it's in the image and the safety tips there is a little bit of a longer list of things. Oh, okay. Yeah. And it, and it looks just a little bit like this, you guys, it goes over, what platform, the advice for safety, and some of the solution tips. And it's a really easy, fast piece. We recommend that you have this um, kept in your Google Drive or bookmark it and um, refer to it if anything happens. If there's an incident, make sure that you come back to the doc and say, have I gone through this checklist? Have I made sure that I have set up um, my system as secure as possible? Before you move from this document, Deborah, if you could scroll all the way down. Yeah. And then for more information, there's the digital platform safety and privacy protocols deck that you can use at your site if you need to. Absolutely. All right. Thanks, Ricardo. Okay. So coming back here, we also wanted to go over with you guys what you can and cannot do with Zoom and your students. Okay. A lot of our students are on Chromebooks. 
many, many, many of our students. We've handed out, I think, almost 20,000 student Chromebooks in the fall already. And so a lot of you were like, I want this to happen. I want to be able to do this. I want to be able to annotate. I want to be able to remote control all these different things that you want. But I wanted to make a concise list of what you can and cannot do as a student on an SFUSD Chromebook. So here it is. Okay. What students can do on a Chromebook is join the meeting, have their audio on and off, have their video on and off. They can click on the participants button and use those nonverbal cues. They can manage participants. So they can, um, if you wanted to give a class job for to a student, they can have that ability. They can invite others to join. They can share their screen, right, and go to Chrome and show what they're doing and what they're working on and all of these different things. They can use the in-meeting chat. They can pin participants' videos, and they can choose between speaker and gallery view. Now, let's go over what they cannot do. Students on a Chromebook cannot annotate. So that annotate button, um, it is not going to work with students on a Chromebook, nor do they have access to the whiteboard? Now that does not mean that you cannot use your whiteboard and share what you're, you know, right? Use it as a, like a whiteboard like you would in regular classroom. Um, and then save those images as a PDF and then keep that for your students and send it to them maybe in Google Classroom or Seesaw. You can do that, but they cannot interact on that whiteboard with you using annotation tools. Remote control. A lot of students, a lot of teachers and um, support staff want to be able to take control of a student's computer, but you cannot do that with the Chromebook. Okay. Also, there's a little button down at the toolbar called the reactions. But guess what? Students don't have that one. So if you're setting a norm with your students, make sure that you're setting the norms and establishing norms using the participants button and the nonverbal cues versus the reactions button because that's an equitable thing for us to do with our students, right? Some students shouldn't be using reactions and some using the nonverbal cues. Just set it all that everybody uses the same tool, okay? This is really important, so listen up, okay? And I'm sure you've already figured this out, but I wanted to talk about it. Links. You put a link in the chat, right? And you want someone to click on it and go to it? Guess what? In Chromebooks, it doesn't come out as a live link. So what you need to do is either teach your students to copy and paste it or find another solution of where you're going to put those live links for your students during your live synchronous lessons. And I'm going to go over that with you in just a minute. Also, they don't have that spotlight tool. They do have the pin tool, but they don't have the spotlight tool. And there's a limit about those view options. So on our student, our teacher, Chrome, uh, teacher laptops, we have a lot of different view options when we click on that for share screens. Students don't have that. They have two options. They have original size or full screen. So this next slide deck I'm going to show you, or the next page in this slide deck I'm going to show you, talks about optimizing your student's experience. And so let's talk about that now. So I have some tips for you guys as a teacher. Um, based on the limitations of Zoom and in a Chromebook, I wanted you guys to really think about that student experience and make sure we're optimizing it for the most for that. Okay, so one thing is, as you can see right now, I don't have anything except this presentation up on the screen. So when my students are looking at it, they see their thumbnails up at the top of the participants and they see a full big screen of the content. If I want to, I can come and click captions here. And then you'll see that the closed captions get added. Nope, that didn't happen. Oh well. Oh, sorry. New computer. Okay, here we go. Now you can see. And you get the closed captions to see. Um, while I'm talking, I have my closed captions as well. So this optimizes that student experience because now they see, they don't see my doc, they don't see a bunch of tabs on Chrome. Think about these things. Make sure you are in present mode. Now, a lot of you are saying, well, it's really uncomfortable to have this up and then I don't see my students and all of this stuff. Think about when you're delivering that content that you are in presentation mode, have your captions on so that your students get that largest screen possible of your content, okay? Then 
If you're going to be showing a video, if you're going to be showing any sound or singing songs together, you want to make sure that you click share computer sound when you're sharing your video. Okay. Also, we talked about links. Links are not live in chat. And yes, you can teach the students how to copy and paste, but that is a lot of steps, right? They need to copy it from chat, open up Chrome, put it in the address bar and click control and paste it in right? And then click go. That's five steps versus what can we do? We can put it into Clever. We just talked about how you can add Zoom meeting links into Clever. Add your live meeting links that you want for your lessons. You can create different categories in Clever and pop those in there. Okay. And we already talked about um, captions. And the last thing we wanted to talk about was the split screen concept, right? A lot of us use split screen. So we have our meeting on one side and we have our content that we're working on on the other side. It's here's a video that you can use linked right here that shows you how to do that for your students. Easy and kind. Okay. So finally, we have resources and very simply go ahead and Yes, and this is the guide to virtual meetings with students. And there are six different pieces that you can choose from here. Meet versus Zoom, Zoom bombing, digital agency for video conferencing, and just wherever you think you need a bit more information, this is the place where you can jump off of and learn a little bit more about virtual meetings with students. Devorah, you wanna add anything before we close? No, just been great meeting with you guys. This is just a short, quick little thinking about safety and security for our students. We know there's going to be incidents that happen. We know there's going to be students that take things too far. But what we're trying to do is make sure that we set established norms, set precedents, and have our safety tips up and running to do the best that we can, our due diligence, to make sure that we are safe and our students are safe. So thank you for joining, thank you for watching, and we'll see you soon. Thank you, thank you.